Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. The thing that we all keep missing in here is that this is set, like, the, the, the first use of the brace is for people that um, cannot right. otherwise... Use, that's my uh, other that's my other point here is what about and I'm not I'm not trying to make belittle anybody mm -hmm. but there's that thing called you know the people with disabilities act stuff you know where you got to have ramps and handles yeah. ADA that doesn't when you take that away from that doesn't apply anymore it so th that's a great point Walter and the one thing that I always told ATF is shouldn't the first the most important thing about whether deciding something is or is not a brace, shouldn't it be its ability to be used as such? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that it's be the most important thing? Mm -hmm. and it's if intended it is, purpose, yes. Right. And if it is, okay, shouldn't that be covered under the American Disabilities Act? And, yeah. and the answer to both of those questions is absolutely yes. Yeah. The problem is, is that the ATF is an agency that – that looks at something and decides under their firearms and technology branch whether it is or is not a firearm and what type of firearm that may be, whether it be under the Gun Control Act or the National Firearms Act. Mm. Well, they are not an agency that decides whether something is or is not an orthotic. And my product is and has always been designed to be an orthotic device. In fact, the person who helped me design it um, – it is the chief orthotist prosthetist at the VA hospital locally here in Florida. Mm -hmm. He's a buddy of mine who I went to college with, and he designs orthotic devices at the VA hospital. And that's who I sat down with. When I first came up with the idea, I said, hey, help me design this thing. Like, what do you think? How do you think it should be? You know, and this was my idea. And I had I this was the first one. Remember, everybody remembers it. It was, you know, the first SB 15. Mm -hmm. And I said, you think this is going to work well? And he was telling me, yeah, well, this is the type of material you want to use. This is the durometer. This is the type of rubber you should use. It is an orthotic device. So in all these years, I'd be really curious to know who the orthotist was at ATF that decides <laughs> whether or not this product is or is not an orthotic device. I don't know if that's I a wanna... fight they want to have even. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I think, I, I think we all know how it works at ATF. Somebody said, I don't like that. Yeah. Right. But here's yeah. the it's, right. it's pretty straight. It's like, I don't like that. Yeah. Or, or in my case, like on my upper, uh, my determination letter is full of a bunch of, you know, that, well, if this is this and this is that and this is that. But there's a point where they go, well, that doesn't matter. They had, they had this thing where it's like, well, that doesn't matter. And it's like, what do you mean it doesn't matter? Do you want to do you want to back up, I, Walter, and tell these guys exactly what happened with your upper and the ATF, if you can, quickly? Remember, we've uh, Alex has a, you know, Alex has a, like a, maybe, I don't know, like five minutes or something. But if you can tell us real quick. <laughs> I yeah, in, in a nutshell, Walter, and I, I know what's going on, and I would love to hear it directly from you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just in a nutshell, one day, well, here's it goes. Somebody tried to import an upper from China. Okay, that's it's been imported into Canada under the name Dominion Arms. He tried to import it. This person, we probably might know him. I'm not going to use any names. He imports some stuff from China. Um, he tried to bring it in. ATF said no. He said, what about these? And what about these was our stuff and three or four other companies' person's stuff. So then a letter shows up saying, you might want to get a determination. You might want to submit one for – and right away it's like, well, that means that means they're going to come knocking on the door if, if, or knock the door down if I don't turn one in because mm -hmm. they're going to say I'm selling illegal guns. Mm -hmm. So we did. We stopped selling them. We turned one in. I went to, I went into the den of the wolves you know, in, in Washington with the lawyers. And uh, we met with Mr. Richardson and, and the legal people and the guy from the tech branch. And, and everybody was talking and they're smiling and all that stuff. And then nothing happened. I mean, I, I sent one in for a determination. Of course, it, it took about four, about, four, I don't know, months because then it was one of those government shutdowns we went through. Right. Where my stuff was sitting in, in, at the, during the government shutdown. Um, finally, the letter comes or the 12-page or the letter, I guess we'll say. Um, 
and you know, blah 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 blah. I had included a complete upper lower everything because we make single shot lowers too, and they even they even modified that to make it work on an AR-15. By the way, um, so wait, and they had, actually they physically <laughs> modified your gun you sent into them so they could fit on on a yeah. They had to tell me that it would work with an AR and that mm -hmm. it needs to be a serial number and it already was bone. The boneheads had to tell me this. Mm -hmm. We'd we'd always serial number to lower, mm -hmm. and. Um, and you know, it was just like I said. It's they consider it because it's manually operated. It has the characteristics of a bolt-action rifle, in a nutshell. If it was gas-operated from the uh, from the firearm firing, mm -hmm. no problem. So I can make a semi-auto upper 50 cal. If I could do it, it won't fit on an AR-1 very well. Mm -hmm. And it'd be, as I say, well, my question was, what about all these straight pull AR-15 uppers that you manually operate? They're not, they're not firearms? <laughs> that is such bull****. <laughs> I think and, someone's and, just and, making and, up stuff. <laughs> and one of the worst parts is, another manufacturer that makes a 338 Lapua upper, I believe he still sells them out serial numbers. Sure mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like that. they applied it to everyone that made bolt action uppers. I mean, for years in the competition world, they've had straight pulled um, these straight pull type rifles in 223 and all this stuff for a long, long, long time. They're not that upper is not a firearm for those guys. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess it just applies to me and a couple of other people, and everybody else can just. Okay. So have you a nice spent day. you spent money to do all of that. I'm not sure how much money you spent. Why did you? Yeah, I mean, I I, I retained a couple lawyers that are mm -hmm. that are in the that are in the Second Amendment bit world. People know who they are if I say who it is. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we went up there and we met with them in person, did all that stuff. I spent a day in D.C. What a great chore, fun that was. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, in the end, it didn't make any difference. They they had their mind already made up, you know. So why and, you did know, you Margaret decide to stop fighting? That's the thing that I'm trying yeah, that I'm trying to get to here. If I had a couple hundred grand to throw at lawyers in a lawsuit. Maybe you'd get something out of it. That that doesn't mean you're gonna get. You're, it's not. It doesn't mean it's gonna go your way. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be. And I, and in the meantime, I wouldn't be able to make them and sell them. So uh, I, mean, I should. I, I, mm -hmm. I'd like to should jump. Just, instead of fighting and worrying about it, you know. And I hate to say this, I should have just started serial number right away. I I wouldn't have went. In, about three quarters of my business went away in a day. Um, that I normally you know, income wise. <sighs> And yeah. we sell, we make them and sell them now the same way, but they have a serial number on it. Um, so, and then then I asked the question, well, what about all the other ones I've sold already? And it's a couple thousand, maybe you know something like that. No response. Yeah. Nothing. We sent a rebuttal letter to ATF. The lawyers did. No response. You know they don't have to answer you back. I guess you know it's like yeah. they do. Yeah. So, they, yeah. So, they, yeah. so Alex, what the uh, and you, Alex is probably trying to get to this. Uh, before yeah. you go, I wanted you to bring up FARC re real briefly. Uh, obviously, Kevin and Walter and I will talk about it after you're gone. Else, um, um, frack is fracking. Frack, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Frack. Yeah. frack. Yeah, I had questions about that. Too, <laughs> my bad. My bad on that one. I'm thinking oh, about. I'm thinking about the Colombian. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about that Colombian. Uh, well, well, I forgot that. Uh, so yeah. So frack. Frack. So. Frack. Frack yeah. is Firearms Regulatory Accountability Coalition. It's a mouthful, so we just say frack. Okay. Uh, and and when I hear you talking, Walter, it's like I'm thinking frack. Like I'm just thinking like now more than ever. And there's and this is kind of going back to some of the things that Kevin brought up earlier that there's not a lot of people out there that that are really helping out. And again, I call that NRA. They've been helping us. In the past, a lot of people didn't know who to go to. You'd go to NSSF, NRA, GOA, Nagger. Uh, you know, Fires Policy Coalition, all these people that are out there, and I probably missed a few, so I apologize for not calling all of them out, but these are the people that are supposed to be there to help you, right? Mm -hmm. Walter's here. He's got a problem. Okay, Kevin's here. He's got a problem. There's, there's SB Tactical that's got a problem. There's a lot of companies out there that are running into this kind of issue, and FRAC was developed specifically for these issues, and what FRAC wants is for the regulatory agency for our industry, the ATF, to operate. And I don't think it's much that we're asking, but after all these years of dealing with it, you'd think you know somebody would have dealt with this earlier, but we want ATF to operate in a fair, transparent, and consistent manner, okay, across the board. Businesses deserve 
fair and predictable regulatory environment. We need that. That's such We're radical thought, man. I can't believe you. But you, yeah. but you the audacity. <laughs> yeah, the audacity of your hope just, <laughs> that they would operate like that. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was designed for that. You go to frackaction.org. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a new group of people. It's going to be reaching out to a whole bunch of industry members, and I hope, my hope for Frack Action, is that people will let whatever bygones be bygones and it will be a group uh, i want i would love it for to, to be for somebody from from the nra somebody from firearms policy coalition somebody from from nssf that gets into this group because this group is the stick okay nssf nra all those other people that's the carrot and those people need to maintain good relationships with people at the atf frack not so much. So okay. so it sounds to me like FRAC is an organization that's going to be a pool of lawyers or money or something like that. And when folks like Walter, uh, folks like Kevin run into these kinds of issues, they could go there because, you know, the, the government can use your own money against you to destroy you. Right. 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 So uh, so so that's the purpose of the organization. That is the purpose of the organization. Okay. The organization will show where all the money is being spent. Mm -hmm. It will have a board of advisory that will look at all of the various in, the incidentals, what's happening to people. And as, a, as an advisory group, it will decide which ones are the most important, things like what happened to Kevin, mm -hmm. things like what's going on to Walter and what's happening to some, several other companies out in the industry. The advisory group will look at that, send it down to a voting group of members. So it's a membership-based organization. And those members will vote to fight for whatever that cause may be mm -hmm. and all the expenses that either the company is getting paying for or using are going to be able to be visible on the website so that people know because the one thing that i think all of us on this call right now have with respect to nra and maybe some other organizations is that we don't know where our money's going mm -hmm. <laughs> frack needs to show I, people my money's where... not going to nra anymore <laughs> that's what i know I... <laughs> so i know that <laughs> I don't. I don't even open their mail anymore. So I just. Right. Yeah. So I, I, again, but I at wanna... the same time, I appreciate like that they came to bat for you. Okay, that's what they're supposed to do. Right. Um, right. And unfortunately, right. in these times, like with what's going on right now in politics and lots of other things, the NRA is kind of uh, missing in action because of other things that are largely on them. But uh, I, I think it's good to hear that they're still out there and they're helping, right? Because. I think, look, we can't deny, I like GOA, I give GOA money and all that, but I don't think they have the political power to talk to the White House. Yeah, I know that's going to hurt some people's feelings. Yeah. I, I want to say something about yeah. this. You know, Alex brought up a couple people earlier in NRA. What I see from my 27 years being involved with them is you have people that are probably my age and younger, like Josh, who want to do these things and then you, you you have the old order of people you know the old rich white men in there that don't give a shit. yeah and you know that's the part that's ruining the nra mm -hmm. you know they don't care about braces they don't care about silencers they don't care about any of this mm -hmm. stuff you have the young people there that are enthusiastic they're more relatable to current you know conditions in this nation i believe mm -hmm. and current product offerings in the industry and they want to protect it, but you know they got layers of people above them that just shut them down every time. And like you know, he mentioned Josh, who's an attorney at NRA in ILA, and he's great. And he wants to do the right thing, and he wants to push forward. He wants to challenge the White House, DOJ, mm -hmm. everyone, you know, ATF, and he gets squashed. I believe, from my perspective, and that's what's sad about the NRA. You know, we we need we need the Wayne LaPierre's to retire. Mm -hmm. and going about their lives okay. you know the world changed our industry's changed and we need change within the nra to be able to effectively support the gun owners of america that are you know currently the ones that are buying guns and participating in this yeah yeah well said um so alex i, I i'm going to give you a chance to say what you have to say because i know you got to go man and i don't want to yeah. like you know i don't want to hold on to you what what do you want us to know that you know we'll talk we'll talk about you once you're gone don't worry it's like let's air our, our dirty laundry and i think that's good for the industry and it's mm -hmm. good for me so 
whatever it is that comes out comes out. I, I think what I've said I wanted to say, I think, you know, what's happened to Kevin is wrong. It's obscene. It's against it's against everything that is American. What's happening to Walter is the same. It's just obscene. It's it's not coherent. It's not transparent. And most of all, it's not consistent. Let's be consistent. Well, let's get let's get the ATF to put up on their website a list of every single approval and disapproval of all of their determination letters. Why can't we have that? The IRS has that. And they had that because if I don't want to run afoul of the IRS, I can go on their website. I can search their website and decide whether I want to do something is correct or incorrect. Yeah, they never. Yeah, they never. They never. They never posted. They never made public mine. Nothing. You know, was, nothing. The only reason we know about certain letters is because we make them public. That's wrong. Uh, if you go to frackaction.org, you can do that. Kevin and Q have done a fantastic job of letting people know where to go. And there's one-click links where you can go to and complain to the White House, to the Department of Justice. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm and like I said, I'm here for everybody. Uh, SB Tactical is here for the good fight. Just get in the fight. If there's one thing I have to say, get in the fight. I don't care what you think about me or Kevin or Walter or you, Hank, or anybody on anybody else. Just get in the fight. Second Amendment rights. That's all we have to worry about right now. I've been a libertarian my entire life. I'll be damned if I'm voting libertarian this year. I can't do it. There's too much at stake, guys. Too much. Yeah. At stake. Yeah. yeah. So. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, you know, for taking that. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time, man. For for getting into the fight with Kevin. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure you guys have talked about this privately, but uh, I I really I'm encouraged to see that there's guys like you in the industry doing it this way. And you know, you deserve your kudos, Alex. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. I don't want to I don't want to hold you. We'll do this again. Completely. Thank you, Thank you Alex. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.